Hi guys, welcome to the next video of the Spring Tutorial Series. In the last video we discussed about the Bean Factory and the XML Bean Factory classes and I told that they have been deprecated so what they did, they came up with another interface called as Application Context which extends from the Bean Factory and it has all the methods available from the Bean Factory plus some added features. So we can easily use this application context in place of the Beam Factory wherever we want and mostly I'll be using this application context interface throughout my tutorial videos. The most commonly used application context implementation class is class path XML application context. So we can instantiate the Spring container by instantiating this implementation class. So let's use this class instead of the bean factory in our code. So let's comment out this bean factory code. What this class path XML application context requires is the name of the XML file where the beans will be defined. Now we can use the same XML file which we created in the last video, this spring.xml file, and it has the bean declaration for our user class. Now since this XML file is there in the class path so even this implementation class can find this XML file from the class path of the project so let's instantiate this application context spring container from our spring servlet here application context class path XML application context let's pass the configuration file here copy this here use this application context ok now let's run this build this and run it on the server Let's test out this Spring Servlet. Okay, so you can see that we are able to get the bean information from the container. So our application context is working fine. One thing, if you notice, it doesn't require a resource file. We can just provide the name of the XML file and it will be able to pick that up. We can even pass multiple XML files in a string array to this class path XML application context constructor. Sometimes it can be useful to have bean definitions in multiple XML files. If our application is divided in multiple modules then we can have one XML file for each module and each XML file will have bean definitions related to its module. But there are two ways to specify multiple XML files. One using the application context constructor passing the XML file names in a string array another one using the import element to load the bean definitions from another file. Let's see the first approach. Suppose we are having two XML files spring.xml and services.xml. Now spring.xml file will have any beans related to our application or model while in services.xml file we are defining the business service objects which we will use to make service calls. So in spring.xml I will define our user bean, it's already been defined in our spring.xml file and now let's create one services.xml file And, and in this configuration file, I'll define LDAP validator. Let's do one thing. Let's copy the namespace from the spring.xml file. Let's 
let's define our LDAP validator here. Mm -hmm. LDAP validator plus what's call dot spring dot services dot LDAP validator. Okay, now we have two XML files. One is having the model, one is having the services. Now, in our application context, we can provide the names of these two XML files in the class path XML application context constructor as a string array. Okay, so this was the first approach. In the second approach, we can just import different files from one main file. So in our case, we can import the services.xml file from suppose spring.xml file. And in our application context, we just need to mention the name of the main XML file here. Now it should be something like this in our spring.xml file. We will import using the import tag. import resource equals services dot xml so here from our spring dot xml file we are importing the services dot xml file so the entire bin definitions which are made in the services dot xml file will be included in the spring dot xml file and spring container would be able to create and manage bin definitions present in both the files so in this video we have basically covered the application context, the class path, XML application context classes. We have also learned how we can separate out the bean definitions in multiple XML files and then how to specify them either in the string array of the specific application context constructor or import those XML files from our main file. Now we will learn more about these containers as we move along. This is it for this video. Thanks for watching.